is graphic. Hi, my name is Jamil, and today in this section we'll be looking at the hyperbola. Let's start with the definition. A hyperbola is the set of all points in a plane such that the difference between the distances from two fixed points, called the foci, is constant. Let's take a look at this graphic. Here in this hyperbola, we can see that the, the hyperbola has foci at the points C0 and negative C0. The hyperbola also has x-intercepts at what we would call A0 and negative A0. The line segment that connects the two vertices is called the transverse axis. The point 0, 0 is right in the midpoint between the two foci, and that's called the center of the hyperbola. You can see the asymptotes of this hyperbola, and they're drawn through what we call the fundamental rectangle, and the asymptotes have equations y equals b over a, I'm sorry, y equals b over ax, and y equals negative b over ax. Let's go ahead and look at this next graphic. The equation of a hyperbola is centered at 0, 0, opening left and right. The equation of a hyperbola is centered at the origin with foci negative c0 and c0, and x-intercepts a0 and negative a0 is given by x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1, where b squared equals c squared minus a squared. Let's take a look at an example. Here we're asked to determine the foci and the equations of the asymptotes, and then sketch the graph of the following. We have x squared over 36 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. Now, what we'll do to start this is we'll find the values of a, b, and c. So here, because from the original equation we know it's x squared over a squared, we know that 36 is equal to a squared. So since a squared equals 36, we'll get the value of a to equal 6. Likewise, we knew that from the original equation, b squared was in the denominator of the y squared term. So b squared will equal 9, which tells us that b has to equal 3. Now, since a is equal to 6 and b is equal to 3, we can go ahead and find the foci at this point, because we know that a squared plus b squared has to equal c squared. So 6 squared plus 3 squared has to equal c squared. That gives us that uh, c squared equals 36 plus 9, and 36 plus 9 is 45. So the foci in this equation are equal to, or I'm sorry, the value c, which gives us the foci, is equal to the square root of 45. Now taking all this information and putting it together, we can create the graph. So to create the graph, what we'll do first is we'll put in the x-intercepts, which remember, we found those at the value a and negative a. So a was 6. So that would be 6, 0 here, and then negative 6. And those give us the vertex of the um, hyperbola. Now we'll go ahead and put the values of b, which will help us to draw the fundamental rectangle. So we found the values of b to be uh, 3 and negative 3. So there's 3 and negative 3. And now we can draw the fundamental rectangle. And from that fundamental rectangle, we'll be able to find our asymptotes for this hyperbola. Remember, it's the asymptotes will be found by drawing the diagonals of this fundamental rectangle. So one of the asymptotes will be drawn like this. And the other asymptote will be the other diagonal of the fundamental rectangle and look like this. Now we were told that this uh, hyperbola opens left and right and has its vertex at 6, 0. So we can now draw in the hyperbola going to the right like this. And then on the other side, going to the left like this. The last question we were asked to find is to find the equations of each of the asymptotes. Uh, this asymptote here has the equation y equals 1 half x, and this asymptote has the equation y equals negative 1 half x, and it can be found by uh, using the formula y equals b over a times x, and y equals b over a times negative x. Let's now look at the equation of a hyperbola that opens up and down. 
The equation of a hyperbola centered at the origin with foci 0c and 0, negative c, and y-intercepts 0a and 0, negative a, is given by y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1, where b squared equals c squared minus a squared. Let's take a look at that general picture. Here we see our hyperbola opening up and down. The foci are given by the point 0c and 0, negative c. Our vertices are given by 0a and 0, negative a. And again, the fundamental rectangle can be drawn by finding the values of a and b. And then using the diagonals of that fundamental rectangle, we can draw the asymptotes. And from that, we can produce the graph of the hyperbola. Let's go ahead and look at another example. Determine the foci and the equations of the asymptotes and sketch the graph of y squared over 4 minus x squared over 25 equals 1. Again, to start, what we'll do is we'll find our values of a and b. Since we know that this hyperbola opens up and down, the value a squared is located in the denominator underneath the y squared. So a squared is equal to 4, which tells us that a has the value of 2. So we know the y-intercepts, or the vertex of these hyperbola, fall at the point 0, 2 and 0, negative 2. The value b can be found because b squared will equal 25. And that tells us that b equals 5. And now we can go ahead and find the foci by using the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 2 squared plus 5 squared has to equal c squared, which tells us that 4 plus 25 has to equal c squared. So c squared equals 29, and the value of c is therefore the square root of 29. So now we know that the foci lie on the y-axis at the points 0 root 29 and 0 negative root 29. Let's now go ahead and produce the graph of this hyperbola. I've already drawn in the fundamental rectangle. We found the values of a to be 2, so we have the uh, points 0, 2, and 0, negative 2. We found the values of b to be 5, so that gives us the points 5, 0, and negative 5, 0. Now, uh, since I've drawn the fundamental rectangle, I've gone ahead and extended the diagonals to show the asymptotes of this, of this hyperbola. And from here, we know that the hyperbola opens up and down, so the vertex of this hyperbola is at the point 0, 2, and the hyperbola opens this way. And the other vertex is at the point 0, negative 2, and the hyperbola would open downward this way. The equations of these asymptotes are y equals 2 fifths x and y equals negative 2 fifths x. And again, that can be found by doing y equals a over b times x and y equals negative a over b times x. Why don't you go ahead and try this next equation on your own. Determine the foci and the equations of the asymptotes and sketch the graph of x squared over 4 minus y squared equals 1. Give this a try and check back with me when you've completed it. All right, let's see how you did. You were asked to find the foci, the equation of the asymptotes, and sketch the graph of x squared over 4 minus y squared equals 1. Hopefully, you started by finding the values of a and b. Here, because the y squared is uh, by itself, we can assume that the denominator is 1. So think of this as y squared over 1. Now, what we'll do is we'll find the value of a. And since a squared is equal to 4, we know that a has the value of 2. And since this is y squared over 1, we know that b squared equals 1, and that tells us the value of b is 1. So now we know that the vertex of this hyperbola is at the points 2, 0, and negative 2, 0 on the x-axis. And then we can draw the fundamental rectangle by using the points 0, 1, and 0, negative 1. So let's go ahead and draw this hyperbola. Again, we know that the uh, values of a are 2, so we'll move 2 to the I'm sorry, to the point 2, 0, and to the point negative 2, 0. And the values of b are 1, so we can move to the point 0, 1, and 0, negative 1. And now we can create the fundamental rectangle from these points. So drawing the fundamental rectangle, and then using the diagonals of this rectangle as the asymptotes for our hyperbola, Okay. We know that this, per, this hyperbola opens to the left and to the right, so the vertex is here at 2, 0, 
and this is what it would look like opening to the right. And on the left side, we know the vertex is at negative 2, 0, so it opens to the left. The equations for these asymptotes are found by y equals 1 half x and y equals negative 1 half x. And the last thing we need to do is to find the focus or the foci points for this one. So to do that, we can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So our value of a again was 2, so 2 squared, plus the value of b is 1, 2 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared, which tells us that 4 plus 1 equals c squared, which gives us that 5 equals c squared. So the value of c is the square root of 5. So we know that the focus lies at the point 0, I'm sorry, square root of 5 comma 0 and negative square root of 5 comma 0, which would be located about at these points here. Let's now look at a hyperbola that's not centered at the origin. Hyperbola is centered at the point HK. A hyperbola centered at HK, opening left and right, has a horizontal transverse axis and equation x minus h quantity squared over a squared minus y minus k quantity squared over b squared is equal to 1. And then a hyperbola centered at HK opening up and down has a vertical transverse axis and the following equation y minus k quantity squared over a squared minus x minus h quantity squared over b squared is equal to 1. Let's go ahead and try to graph an equation of a hyperbola that's not centered at the origin. Here we're asked to sketch the graph of the hyperbola. Determine the foci and the equations of the asymptotes. And we're given the equation x plus 2 quantity squared over 16 minus y minus 3 quantity squared over 9 is equal to 1. The first thing we need to do is figure out where this hyperbola is centered or find the values of h and k. Since we know that this is in the form of x minus h squared on the top here, we know that our value of h will equal negative 2. And since over here we have uh, the hyperbola in the form of the equation y minus k, we know that y minus k has to be the y minus 3, so k has to equal positive 3. So we now know our center is the point negative 2, 3. From here, we can find the value of a as we did before a squared is equal to 16, and that tells us that a is equal to 4. So now, the value of b can be found the same way, and b squared is equal to 9, so the value of b is equal to 3. So this time, when we go to make our fundamental rectangle, instead of moving from the origin 4 units to the left and to the right, we're going to actually have to move from the center. So this point that we'll find for the fundamental rectangle we have four units to the left of negative 2, 3, and four units to the right of negative 2, 3. Same thing here. When we go to find this part of the fundamental rectangle, we won't be moving three units up and down from the origin. We'll be, we'll be moving three units up and down from the center of our hyperbola, negative 2, 3. Let's go ahead and graph this. In order to graph this, we'll start by showing the center of our hyperbola, and that's at negative 2, 3. So it's over 2 to the left and up 3. And now what we need to do is we need to move the correct uh, units in order to make the fundamental rectangle. So again, our value of a is 4, so that means we'll have to move to the right and to the left 4 units. So moving to the right 4 units takes us to the point 2, comma 3. And then moving to the left 4 units takes us to the value negative 6, comma 3. So those show our values of A for the fundamental rectangle. And now we need to do our values for B. And B was 3, so we'll have to move up and down from this point 3 units. So moving up, we get the point negative 2, 6. And moving down 3 units, we get the point negative 2, 0. So now we can draw our fundamental rectangle and use the fundamental rectangle to find the asymptotes for our hyperbola. So drawing the asymptotes, they're the diagonals of this rectangle, which do pass right through the center of our box. And now we know that this hyperbola opens left and right. So our vertex is the point 2, 3 on the right side, and our hyperbola can be drawn opening to the right from there. And the point negative 6, 3 on the left side, it can, it can be drawn opening to the left on, from there. 
The last thing we need to do is find the foci for this one. And remember that a squared plus b squared has to equal c squared. So in this problem, we had that a was equal to 4 and b was equal to 3. So that gives us that 4 squared plus 3 squared has to equal c squared. Well, that's 16 plus 9, so we get 25 equals c squared, which tells us that c is the square root of 25, which is 5. So now, in order to find the foci correctly, we have to take that 5, and we have to add it to the center of our hyperbola. So moving 5 units to the right, that would be starting at negative 2, 3, and moving 5 units to the right, and that would take us to um, 3, 3. So one of the foci is located at the point 3, 3. And the other one, starting at negative 2, 3, and moving 5 units to the left, that would take us to the point negative 7, 3. So those are the values for the points of our two foci. Let's go back and find the equations for the asymptotes of this hyperbola. Here, what we have to remember is our asymptotes will go through the point negative 2, 3, and one of them will have the slope of positive 3 fourths, so that gives us the asymptote y equals 3 fourths x plus 9 halves. And the other one also goes to the point negative 2, 3, but has a slope of negative 3 fourths. So that will give us the equation y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 3 halves. In this lesson, you've seen how a 